Dandelion honey. Collect as many heads of dandelions as you can. Try and do it in a very sunny day away from a roadside. Soak your dandelion flowers in some cold water for five minutes just to allow any insects to escape. Remove the petals from the dandelion. Discard the anthers in the middle and the sepals. Place in a heavy bottom saucepan with the same amount of water. So four cups of dandelion petals, four cups of water. I've just got half a pint of dandelion petals, so I use half a pint of water. Then place in slices of lemon. Uh, thick slices of lemon. About three lemons for each four cups of dandelion petals, or about three quarters of a lemon for one cup dandelion petals. Add some vanilla bean if you have it, if not a tiny bit of vanilla essence. Bring to the boil and then lower the heat and simmer for 30 minutes. Take the pan off the heat and leave to seep for six hours. Strain the dandelions through some cheesecloth and then discard the solids. Place the dandelion tea in a heavy saucepan and bring it to a low boil. Gradually add the sugar, about half as much as the petals, and then stir until it's all dissolved. Lower the heat and simmer uncovered until you get the desired syrupy consistency. This may take quite a while. For a few hours later, I have some nice syrup yeast structure. So quite a few hours. That's gonna go into a container once it's cooled and it can stay in the fridge until I need it. And I can use it for anything I use honey for. So I hope you can make some for yourself. Obviously, the more you use, the more dandelion you use, the more honey you will create. So this really wasn't enough to last me very long. So I recommend probably about four cups. So a couple of pints of the petals so you can get a nice lot of honey. So now we're going to pick some wild garlic to make wild garlic pesto. Now if you have a look at wild garlic found in wooded areas but try and make sure it's not next to the road. Whenever you're foraging, you want to be away from traffic, even though there isn't that much traffic at the moment. This is a wild garlic leaf, and it looks like the end of a spear. Now, if you compare to the spring stroll that we took a few weeks ago, we've got lords and ladies, which are also about this time of year, poisonous, you don't want to get them muddled up. Lords and ladies have a arrow shaped at the bottom and they're more round at the top. They're usually broader, sometimes mottled. But the best way to tell them apart Give it a sniff. Smells like garlic. It's wild garlic. So you need to take a few handfuls of this, depending on how you want to use it. To make pesto, you don't need too much. If you want to make soup, you need a bit more. But when you're taking your handfuls, just be careful to take out what you don't need. So obviously you don't want grass. It's fine to eat, but it's not going to provide you with anything. You want to just pick out the wild garlic. So take out all the things you don't want. You can also give it a bit of a shake. Any animals can then go back into their habitat and not into your bag. And just be careful. You might find some leaves that look a bit, look wild, a bit like wild garlic, but are in fact not. So this one here again is a bit spear shaped, but it doesn't. 
smell like garlic, so it isn't wild garlic. This is dock, which is fine to eat as a salad, but we don't really want to put that into our wild garlic pesto or soup, so we need to make sure we are clear of every single leaf, give them all a sniff, and then you can be sure that it's the right plant. You've also got wild garlic flowers. Now these are fine to eat as well. Great thing about wild garlic, you can eat the flowers, the stems and the leaves and even the roots so you don't have to try sorting them out. Okay, so take as many of you can into your basket or into your bag. Just make sure you leave enough for the bees to pollinate, enough for somebody else and enough to actually create more tubers for next year. So you're going to take a fifth at the very most but that's far more than you possibly need. Look at the amount we've got here. Also try not to go where you think dogs have been doing their business and just be careful that you're not making a, a big change to the landscape. So try and go where it's going to be a bit hidden and people aren't going to see and think, oh, I'm going to take some of those and they don't actually know what they're doing. So I've finished my bag, off I go. This one here, this is our spear shaped, this is our wild garlic. And this one is our arrow shaped lords and ladies. And if you follow it back, you might find our flower head as well, which are going over at the moment. So they're actually not as obvious, so you can miss them. And also we've got some of that dock that I mentioned. So again, if you're picking here, you must be aware of which one of these leaves you're actually going to collect. You want your wild garlic. Remember, smell is the key. And make sure after you've done your foraging, you wash your hands just in case you have touched some of these poisonous plants. To make wild garlic pesto, you will need 150 grams of wild garlic leaves. You can also bulk it out with the flowers and the stems. If you can't get enough wild garlic, you can add nettles as well and make a mixture between the two. Here's the wild garlic leaves. And then roughly chop them. Blitz the wild garlic with 50 grams of parmesan and a garlic clove. Zest from half a lemon. And a squeeze of lemon juice. Toast your pine nuts, or I'm using almonds here, but keep watch of them because they can burn very easily. Let's do a rough paste in a food processor. Seal well, and then if you have a food processor, you can slowly add all the oil, that's 150 milliliters of oil, rapeseed oil or vegetable oil, slowly. Now I haven't so I'm just going to put in a bit at a time and then whiz it up in between. Season to taste again and add a bit more lemon juice if you like. Then you can put it into a glass jar and put over the last of the oil if you haven't put in all of it or a little bit more on the top. It should last in the fridge for about two weeks. Great to go on pasta of course or on top of cheese on toast or you can just eat it as a dip. Yummy. To collect your nettles for stinging nettle soup, make sure you do it at the beginning of spring when the nettles are only just starting to grow. So if you find them, just pick off the top four leaves with gloves, unless you're very brave, put them into a plastic bag. Once you've filled a plastic bag, you can then turn them into soup or put them in a stew. They work the same as spinach, anything you like. Add them to a vegetable soup or a beef stock and you'll have a lovely boost of nutrients ready for your spring. Wash the nettles and drain in a colander. Then melt the butter in a large saucepan. Add an onion and cook gently until softened. Add the stock nettles, a potato diced and a carrot sliced. Bring it to a simmer and cook gently for about 15 minutes. Remove it off the heat and use an electric blender to whiz it up. Add salt and pepper to taste. And then if you want to, add cream before you then spoon it into your bowls.